technology could be changing the face of the job interview, literally. Artificial intelligence has the potential to help streamline the hiring process, but some people say we have to be conscious of its limits. Matthew Braga reports on technology for CBC News and wrote about this online at our website, and he's with me now. Very interesting read, by the way. Thank you. Uh, but uh, first of all, can you give us a sense of when and how AI can be used by employers when they're hiring. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of companies out there that have been thinking about how to apply AI to this process of hiring. And the idea behind it is uh, when you think of how hiring traditionally goes, it's uh, a very human process, right? You have humans mm -hmm. who are making decisions about uh, which resumes to throw in the trash, which ones to put aside, who to call in for an interview, who to maybe turn away, uh, all the way up to who are you actually going to end up hiring in the end. And uh, there's been lots of studies over the years that have shown that, uh, of course, all of the sort of implicit biases that we have really come into play in that process and can uh, result in some people being passed over perhaps unfairly. And so the idea mm -hmm. then is that companies are saying, well, what if we could use AI? What if we could take uh, computers, which we often think of as objective, right? Uh, mm -hmm. these, these sort of, it's just kind of code that we kind of program and we can let the computer at least uh, help us make some of these decisions uh, so that we can remove a little bit of that human bias or reduce a little bit of that bias uh, with the help of uh, these impartial uh, bits of code. All right, instead. so I know technology is getting smarter <laughs> smarter but how does this technology work how does it kind of sort of you know pick the yes pile over the no pile. Yeah, so we spoke with one company. They're based in Toronto, and they're called Knockery. And what they've done is they say that uh, they want to use AI in essentially the shortlisting process. So if you have a job where you get all these candidates, how do you filter through them, and how do you get that shortlist of people who, who then still kind of go through that human process of hiring? And so they have come up with, it's basically a video interview system. So uh, a lot of people perhaps now have, have applied for jobs where they're asked to record these interviews, and then those interviews sometimes get sent to humans who review them. Uh, but this company, Knockery is saying instead, well, what if we take those videos and we have algorithms analyze them? So analyze uh, your facial uh, sort of uh, movements, uh, mm -hmm. the way you speak, the emotion in your, in, your, in your voice, the tone, the content of what you're saying. Uh, several thousand data points this company says they're able to look at and uh, essentially use that to score things like empathy, uh, your confidence, uh, mm -hmm. your willingness to collaborate with others, your ability to adapt and change to, to sort of roles as they evolve. All of these things that they say that uh, in conversation conversation with psychologists, they've uh, noticed that there's a couple of these traits, about 15, uh, that can be used as predictors for success, especially for roles where you have to rely a lot on soft skills and, and sort mm. of people-to-people -people interaction. And so they're saying, well, we have these algorithms, they can look at sort of the way you talk, score you, and then use that to uh, essentially rate candidates and, uh, and build these short lists that then go this to... This is <laughs> wild. I mean, it kind of makes your head spin, right? Yeah. I mean, just the, that, 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 that an algorithm would be able to do all of that. Yes. What are the potential benefits for employers and for the people they're interviewing. So when you talk to companies like Knockery, and, and also when you hear from companies that want to use this sort of technology, the idea is uh, that they will be able to do a couple of things. It'll help them uh, sort through the volume of candidates that they are receiving faster, more quickly, because uh, if you're receiving tons and tons of them, it's, it's a lot of work to go through these, and so they say that'll reduce that amount of time. Uh, you'll also be able to uh, improve the uh, level of diversity in the candidates you're getting, um, more racially diverse candidates, uh, more uh, gender diverse candidates as well. Uh, which is certainly something that a lot of companies want. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the idea being that you use something uh, like Knockery and you're able to uh, reduce some of the bias that perhaps uh, hiring managers and interviewers and recruiters bring into the process themselves. Uh, and uh, also, too, the company says this allows you to get better candidates as well, more mm -hmm. skilled uh, candidates. That's, that's the pitch that they kind of give to, to clients. But there's got to be some concerns around, you know, this application of artificial intelligence, right? Certainly. So th there's a few things that often come up when we talk about artificial intelligence generally, but also particularly in the hiring context. So one of them I kind of alluded to earlier on, this idea that when we bring computers and code into the process, people uh, like to think that uh, machines are objective, that uh, they, they you know, don't uh, differentiate or they don't bring their own bias into it the way that humans do. But the thing that a lot of um, uh, researchers, academics, lawyers, uh, social scientists like to point out is that uh, you know, the algorithms are only as good as the people who are training them, who are only as good as sort of the, the, uh, the information on which we are training these algorithms as well. And so that's why uh, you have companies paying more attention, including Knockery, to uh, the diversity on the team that are actually building these algorithms, the uh, diversity in the data on which these algorithms are trained. So that's one hmm. interesting... Because uh, humans uh, make the algorithm, is what you're saying. Exactly, yeah. right. And so people are kind of uh, coming alive to this idea that, well, if you have an algorithm that is only trained on, and we've seen this happen, especially with facial recognition, where uh, companies in the past perhaps only trained their facial recognition algorithms on a 
very narrow subset of the population. Mm. In some cases, we've seen uh, a couple of years back, facial recognition algorithms only trained on white men uh, meant that the facial recognition algorithms performed very well on that subset of the population, but not so well on women and people of color, mm. which not so great when you're maybe making a hiring uh, AI for, for, for the hiring process. And so things like this is often what people uh, mention. And then we also talked to some experts as well that, that really pointed out that this is only one part of the hiring process, that you can create an AI that makes the, uh, the process a little bit more streamlined or, or reduces the bias uh, when you're creating these short lists. Uh, but what about the company's overall culture, right? What, what happens uh, to these people once they're actually hired and brought on uh, to companies? Uh, we had some good insight from uh, Sadia Muzaffar, who is an entrepreneur. She founded Tech Girls Canada, and you can read more comments on that from her in our article uh, on, uh, the one with the, on the website as well. So uh, all things to look out for. It's, it's thorny, but... Uh, it's you know. thorny, but very interesting. All right, Matthew, thank you. That is CBC's technology reporter, Matthew Braga.